Scrapwood challenge, scrapwood challenge. It's crack, it's crack, it's firewood, but some of the wood is good. Before I start a project, I usually have it well worked out before I begin, but this toolbox I'm making today, I only have a vague idea how I'm going about it, so I'll work it out as I go along. As well as my usual storage of camphor laurel, I also have this box of smaller pieces and I can make use of a few of those on this project. I'll prepare the offcuts the fast way in this video as I've shown how I go about that so many times in past videos. I do need to plane the stock down to final size though and I'm doing that on the thicknesser. Before I start using the stock that I prepared I need to make two ends for the toolbox. All the dimensions of the project will be based off those. I'm making them from plywood so it isn't affected by wood movement and then I'll cover it with a veneer. This piece of camphor laurel will be perfect for the veneer. I found it in the scrap bin which would have been from a past project. It'll be an octagonal toolbox, there's a plastic version you can buy but I thought it'd be fun to try and make a wooden one. The end pieces need to be fairly accurate, so I'm carefully marking those out into octagons. I'm doing that by going from the center using a bevel gauge set at 22 and a half degrees. Then I'm marking across the corners at 45 degrees, and if it's accurate, the mark should meet up. And then finally, I'm measuring a few of the sides just to make sure that they're all the same length. Before I made the ends, I realized that the side pieces that I'd already cut for the toolbox aren't quite wide enough. The toolbox would have been too small and not much use, so I prepared some more pieces off camera, but the other pieces will still be of use later in the project. Now that the side pieces are cut to length, I'll bevel one of the edges on all the pieces at 22 and a half degrees. Now I'll split the ends in two and the smaller pieces will be for the lid. I'll do that with a Japanese saw as the kerf is very thin and I won't lose too much material.
Start off the new year right and join the Makers Mob for a full month of live events happening throughout January, starting on January the 7th, 2021, where you can learn to build woodworking projects from the makers themselves. In these live events, Jimmy DeResta, John Peters, the Samurai Carpenter and Adam Henkel will be walking you through some of their most popular projects. Sign up is absolutely free and you can find that by clicking the link in the description below. To help position the lid, I'll glue it to the two hinges. That will keep it in place while I put the screws in. That's pretty much a finished octagonal toolbox, but now I'll start making trays that fit around the outside and the toolbox can be rolled out to get access to them. I'll start by trimming the sides of the trays to length. Next I'll cut a rebate for a 4mm plywood bottom to fit into. I make one pass and then nudge the fence over and make a second pass. The plywood is marine ply, it will be exposed on the outside of the finished toolbox but it's a decent plywood so it should look okay. This is how the trays will be assembled and these are the pieces that I said I'll be using earlier when I cut them too small and they'll be used to make the ends. The ends are just going to be butt jointed which isn't ideal, I'll put nails in later on but I need to bevel the sides on the table saw so I'll do that first and then put the nails in later. The two trays located next to the hinges need a notch taken out and that's so they can sit flat against the toolbox. One of the trays needs fixing to the toolbox and I'll do that using a couple of hinges.
I'll be holding the trace together with a couple of leather straps. First I'll align and tape the trace together and then I'll lay out exactly where I need to apply the glue to attach them. Before I glue the leather, I'll punch a hole in the end of each piece now and that's ready for a press stud which I'll install later on. The hinge screws just poke through so I'm using a file just to take the point off. The last tray needs a small amount taken off where it makes contact with the barrel of the hinge. That fits much better, now I can install the press studs. I'm giving the whole thing a check over with some sandpaper including the edges of the leather and then for the finish I'm just using furniture wax as I need to get the project and the video finished and this is about the quickest way. I didn't do inside the trays or the toolbox but I will put something on those later on and I'll probably just use linseed oil. And the last thing it needs is to install a handle.
I reckon it turned out much better than I'd hoped. I really did have my doubts about it before starting. There's a few things I could do to improve it. I could drill a finger hole for opening the lid and add a catch or a magnet to keep the lid closed. I'm extremely happy with it, even though I should have used a better color filler for the nail holes, and I may pick that out yet and redo them. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to come back tomorrow for the last video in the seven scrapwood challenges in seven days.